we're actually driving through Cana. This is one of the two possible locations of the first miracle that Jesus did where he turned the water into wine at the wedding feast. The Gospels record that Cana is really where Jesus' ministry got started with that very first miracle. So what we saw at the Israel Museum was some large stone jars that were used for holding water for ritual purification. That's right. It was most likely that Jesus converted that water into wine in Cana. I don't think we have time to stop here today, but it's interesting still to drive through this area. It gives you a perspective of where it's located in relation to other cities and villages nearby. Visiting ancient Jericho, I really enjoy going there because you get a different perspective of the city. We hear about Jericho a number of times in the Bible. Outside of Jerusalem and maybe one or two other cities, it's mentioned more times than any other city in the Bible. On a clear day when there's no haze, you can stand on the tell and you can actually look across the Jordan Rift Valley and see Mount Nebo. Jericho is one of, if not the oldest, longest occupied cities in all of the world. And so there's just layer after layer after layer of historical events that took place there. It is blistering hot out here. Well, the thermometer says 103 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's because we're so far below sea level. At Jerusalem, we're about 2,700 feet above sea level. Mm -hmm. Here at Jericho, we're nearly 800 feet below sea level. We're down in the Jordan Rift Valley, and we're probably only five miles or so from the northern end of the Dead Sea. And this time of year, it gets really warm down here. We're here because we want to talk about one of Jesus' miracles. It's so powerful. In Mark, the 10th chapter, we actually read a scripture that says, And they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. But if you look over at Luke's account, it says in chapter 18, as he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. So this appears at first glance to be a contradiction. Right. Mark tells the story and he says he was leaving Jericho, but Luke says he was coming to Jericho, so which is it? Well, actually, it's both. During the first century, Jericho was divided into two different parts. Residential Jericho sat right around where we are right now. Administrative Jericho sat about a mile and a half to the southwest of us. This is where King Herod had his palace. So Mark is telling this story from a Jewish perspective as Jesus was leaving Jericho. Luke, on the other hand, is telling this from a Gentile perspective as he was approaching Jericho. He's talking about administrative Jericho. And if you think about it, that makes sense because if you were a blind man, where would you want to be? Well, you would want to be on the road between the two parts of the cities where the most traffic is. He's placed himself on a crossroads. Besides just the logistics of the miracle itself, Jesus is on his way up to Jerusalem from Jericho, making his way toward that last Passover feast, his final week before he's crucified. And so anyone else, they'd be thinking a lot about themselves. He takes the time to heal one more person with a physical malady. Jesus already knew, I mean, he's the son of God. He already knew what the man's problem was, but he still gave him opportunity to identify it. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And God wants to hear from us. He already knows what our problems are. He already knows what our struggles are, but he wants that level of communication with us too. He wants us to vocalize it and interact with him. And Jesus gave him that opportunity. This man, when he recognizes that Jesus, the son of David, the king is coming, he cries out all the more loudly and identified him as a descendant of David, attaching the title of king to him. And Jesus responded by healing him on his way up to Jerusalem. The blind man Bartimaeus is one of my personal heroes in the Bible. This is a gentleman who knew he had a problem. He knew that there was only one person that could fix it and that's Jesus. And he wasn't gonna let anybody stand in his way. That's the approach that we should take with our lives. That's right. I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.